Welcome back, mathletes. We're going to continue on our unit. It's about parallel and perpendicular lines, part one. And about time, we're going to start talking about perpendicular lines. Yay! So we're going to learn, finally, about the relationship between parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay, And we're going to start wrapping up this unit because uh, uh, we're going to have algebra applications throughout. But mostly, we're going to be learning about now uh, perpendicular lines and how they relate with parallel lines. So we're going to learn some neat things. First things first, though, uh, we should probably know about perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines intersect at 90 degree angles, or they intersect at right angles. In okay, case so that's an important thing to know, have that in your bag of tricks for arguing, uh, and then uh, we'll know that, and then we'll probably end up using it at a later time. Okay, so perpendicular lines intersect at 90 degree angles. All right, so we have all this information in the textbook, and again, I'm going to be working with the textbook. And uh, I'll go through a few things. Uh, I'll highlight some of the special questions that are in here, and, uh, and we'll just jump right in. Let's start building our notes. Um, so what we're about to do is, is learn a few uh, what I call fun theorems. Uh, you don't really need to know their name as far as the name goes, but I'm just going to refer to these as pretty fun theorems. So I get the book out of the way, and uh, let's take a look at some fun theorems. So here's a fun theorem, right? We have a, a situation that, that's going on here. And so the first question I want to ask you is, what is it that you see when you look at this diagram? And I want you to pay attention to the inline angle or the inline arrows that are, that are here. Okay, so I want to see what you see. And as you're looking at that diagram, hopefully you see this, that uh, line A is parallel to line B because they both have one inline arrow. And line B is parallel to line C because they have two inline arrows. So I want you to be able to see that. And then once you see that, we can start learning some stuff. Okay, so now we have to know this. Here's a neat little factoid. Okay, this is a theorem. All right, so a factoid. Lines that are parallel to the same line are parallel to each other. Okay, lines that are parallel to the same line are parallel to each other. And it's kind of like the transitive property, but we're dealing with parallel lines. Okay, but this is what you have to know how to say. You need to know how to say this. Lines that are parallel to the same line are parallel to each other. So. So based on what we're looking about, uh, looking at, remember what do we see? A is parallel to B, and B is parallel to C. Uh, what do we now know? Hopefully you have come to the conclusion, uh, and if you haven't yet, you will now, that, well, based on this, A is parallel to C. Line A is parallel to line C. Why are they parallel? Because lines that are parallel to the same line are parallel to each other. Isn't that fun? That's a fun theorem. That's why I called it a fun theorem. All right, so now we're going to learn about another fun theorem. Look at this, a whole other fun theorem. So we're going to take a look at this diagram. Okay, so we get this diagram here, and uh, we're going to dig into it. This is a fun theorem. So the first thing I want to ask with this diagram is, well, what is it that you see? Okay, now remember what we talked about. We talked about perpendicular lines meaning something. They intersect at 90 degree angles. Okay, so hopefully you are noticing this is a 90 degree angle. And this is a 90 degree angle. So what is it that you see? Hopefully you see the same thing I see, which is that line A is perpendicular to line C. Okay, line A and line C are perpendicular. That's what that says. And then, well, line B is perpendicular to line C. Okay, line B is perpendicular to line C. Hopefully you notice that. I want you to notice that. Now, we can't say yet that A and B are parallel. We don't know because we don't have the inline arrows, right? So we don't have that. We can't say they're parallel yet, but we should know this. Know this. There's a thing that you got to know. Lines that are perpendicular to the same line are parallel to each other. Lines that are perpendicular to the same line are parallel to each other. Okay, Lines that are perpendicular to the same line are parallel to each other. So, so what do we now know about this diagram? Okay, remember, A is perpendicular to C, B is perpendicular to C. What do we now know based on that little factoid? 
and hopefully you're thinking the same thing I am, that's line A is parallel to line B. Okay, so that's what we can know. Again, it's kind of like the transitive property as far as thinking goes, but we have to know how to say this. Lines that are perpendicular to the same line are parallel to each other. Fun factoid, okay? Okay. The next neat theorem, because it's so much fun. I don't know if I drew this correctly. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. So here we have something going on. Okay, so another, another diagram is happening. Okay, so we have this other diagram going on. And uh, let's go on. Let's go on with what, what is it that we see. Okay, so now in this one, take a look at the inline arrows here. We can say A is parallel to B. And we can say that A is perpendicular with C. Hopefully you see that, okay? So... Uh, a is perpendicular to C, and A is parallel to B. Okay, I want you to be able to see that from the diagram. Okay, so that's, uh, that's important. Remember, we're visualizing geometry, right? So with that, here's what we have to know. Know this. Here's the thing. All right, check this out. This is a fun little factoid. In a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it is also perpendicular to the other line. <gasps> okay, so that's a thing we have to know. It's another theorem, okay, but it's a thing we have to know. So what do we now know? Okay, looking at this diagram, take a look, take a look at what's happening here. If in a plane, a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it's also perpendicular to the other line. So based on this, if we know A is perpendicular with C and A and B are parallel, what else do we now know? And hopefully you're looking at a relationship between B and C and you now know that B and C are perpendicular. Okay, C and B are perpendicular. A fun little factoid, a great theorem. But this one's kind of neat. Look at how this theorem begins in a plane. In a plane. Let's think about that. I want to think about that for a second. Why is it that we have to start this theorem off in a plane? Okay, so take a look at this neat little diagram I drew. Isn't that pretty? Oh, Mr. Catch, you're so talented. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Okay, so we have this, uh, we have this neat diagram. It's a three-dimensional shape. It's a, it's a rectangular prism, and I have uh, labeled it with points. And you can see in, in, on the plane, uh, plane C-A-G-E, okay, there's a plane, there's a right angle up there, and then segment C-A and segment D-B are parallel, okay? So C-E is perpendicular to C-A, and C-A is parallel to D-B. Now, what can we say about segments C-E and D-B? What can we say? Are they, are they perpendicular as well? So is CE and DB perpendicular to each other? No, they're not. These are totally not perpendicular to each other because this is a rectangular prism. They're skew, right? So CE and DB are skew. So for this theorem, right, this theorem, we, have to, we really have to say in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it's perpendicular to the other line. Okay, so it's really important that we know that, okay? Okay, so let's have some fun, shall we? Time to jump into proofs. Woohoo! Yeah, I'll hide it this way. Okay, so here, here's a neat proof, okay? We're going to jump into a proof. Now, I'm giving, I'm giving you a diagram, okay? And you can see we got an, a line R and a line S and a line T and a right angle here and a right angle there and an angle 1 and an angle 2, right? So all this stuff is going on. I'm going to give you, okay, that in a plane... Okay, R is perpendicular to T, R and T are perpendicular, and S is perpendicular to T, boom, boom, boom. And what we're going to prove, okay, we're going to prove that R is parallel to S. And so we have to start thinking now, right? I hope you are thinking. How in the world are we going to come to the conclusion that R is parallel to S? How can we come to that conclusion based on all these fun theorems we just learned, right? So this is what we got to think through. We have to think through. If we could somehow show, if we can somehow show that angle 1 and angle two are uh, congruent, we would have corresponding angles, right? So let's, uh, we're gonna prove that one theorem. We're gonna show that uh, one and two are corresponding angles. How are we gonna do that? Well, remember how proofs work. We have our statement and we have our reason. Remember, we're gonna go line by line. And always the first thing we should do is start with the given. 
And we're given that r is perpendicular to t. And what do we know if, uh, if lines are perpendicular? Okay, so we have to establish a thing. We're going to establish that the measure of angle 1 is 90 degrees. How do we know? Because perpendicular lines intersect at 90 degree angles. That's an, Im that's an important thing to show. Okay, so we're going to hold on to that. We're going to hold on to that. Now we're going to go back to the given, that S is perpendicular to T, because that's given to us, right? S is perpendicular to T, totally given to us. But what does that mean now? S and T are perpendicular. Guess what we know about angle 2? We now know a thing about angle 2. The measure of angle 2 is 90. How do we know? We have to say, we totally have to say this, perpendicular lines intersect at 90 degree angles. So now we're almost done. We just have to establish one more thing. We have to say this. Okay, measure, the measure of angle 1 is now equal to the measure of angle 2. And how is that true? Transitive property of equality. That's right. So there's a little bit of review piece there, right? And now we're sealing the deal. Okay, sealing the deal. What can we do? Well, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because angles with the same measure are congruent. Okay, we have to establish angle 1 and angle 2 being congruent. Angles with the same measure are congruent. We have to establish that because guess what angle 1 and angle 2 are? They are corresponding angles. And now that we know that, blam, mic drop on this one. Okay, so we can drop the mic on this. Now we know R is parallel to S. How, do we, how can we make that jump? Well, we have to remember if corresponding angles are congruent, then lines are parallel. Okay, we have to know those if-then statements, those theorems. Right? We don't need the titles, but we need to know what they say. So we can form our arguments. And now we're getting back into proofs, OK? So that's, uh, that's an important thing. So I'm going to show you an example. Uh, this is in the book as well. But uh, let's take a look at this thing here. We have uh, you know, what, <laughs> what people will call a real world problem. I don't think it's real world at all. But uh, we're talking about a carpenter, plans to install molding. And this is in the textbook. This is on the C right here. It's the, it's the same question, um, same thing right there. So if you have the book, you can look at it there, but uh, I'll show it here. Okay, so the carpenter cuts the top of the piece and the corner of each side at 45 degree angles as shown. And with the pieces of molding, uh, will the side pieces be parallel? How can we explain ourselves? Well, we got to think. Can we say perpendicular? Can we say that the side is perpendicular to the top? Can we establish that? Okay, uh, and, and hopefully you're thinking, yeah, we can. Okay. Yes, we can, we can establish perpendicular. The side is perpendicular to the top. How can we say they're perpendicular? Because the angle addition postulate, okay, 45 and 45 is 90. And guess what? Perpendicular lines intersect at 90 degree angles. So we can totally say that they are perpendicular. And why? Because the angle addition postulate, right? Isn't that fun? Okay. Angle addition postulate. So we can totally establish that these are perpendicular, no doubt. So now the question is, well, will the pieces uh, of the sides, will the side pieces be parallel? Remember, this side is perpendicular to the top, and this side is perpendicular to the top. Can we say that the sides are parallel? Absolutely. Remember that fun theorem we just learned. If lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. Okay? If they're perpendicular to the same line, they're parallel to each other. That means if this side is perpendicular to the top and this side is, uh, is perpendicular to the top, then the lines are parallel to each other. So yes, we can totally say that these side pieces will be parallel. And that, uh, that is this, this, these new theorems in action. Okay, So uh, let's move on to prove some other cool stuff because there is some cool stuff to be proven. All right, so look at all these proofs. Look at your cats. This is too much. All right, so there's another relationship, uh, another thing that's, that we're doing between two lines. Neat diagram going on. Look at all this craziness that's happening here. And we got to think what's going on. OK, so we, we have an inner plane. C is perpendicular to B, B is perpendicular to D, and D is perpendicular to A. What are we going to prove? C is perpendicular to A. So what's going on? we got C perpendicular to B. We've got B perpendicular to D, and D perpendicular to A. We have to prove that C is perpendicular to A. Can we, make, can we make that jump, right? Can we make that jump? And of course, we have to think. Can we use our cool theorems? The answer is of course. Of course we can, but I'm going to show you how. OK, so let's go back to how a proof works. Okay, We start with a statement. 
and a reason. Okay, statement and a reason. Let's begin with the given. Always begin with the given. So we given, all right? C is perpendicular to B. Given, totally given. And you know what? B is perpendicular to D. Given. Why would I do that? Why would I start with these two? C and B and B and D. Because now what I need to do is talk about the relationship between C and D. If I talk about the relationship between C and D, I'm going to unlock a couple things. So can we say anything about C and D? Yes, we can. We can say that C is parallel to D. And how come we can say that? Well, because of our neat theorems, right? We could say that C is parallel to D because lines that are perpendicular to the same line are parallel to each other. We can totally say that. Okay, that's one of the cool theorems we use. So we can establish that C and D are parallel. Now, if C and D are parallel, and we're talking about the, and we're going to end up thinking perpendicular to C and A, right? We want to talk about that relationship. Well, do we have a relationship between D and A, right? Do we have that relationship? Yes. As a matter of fact, we do. It's given to us. Okay, D is perpendicular to A. That's given to us, right? And now we're ready to drop the mic. Because if D is perpendicular to A, right, because that's given, now we know a relationship between A and C. We know that relationship now. What do you think it will be? Mm -hmm. It's that, that cool, cool theorem. We can totally establish C is perpendicular to A. How do we know? We know because in a plane, right, in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other line. So we can totally drop the mic right there. We can make that proof on that last argument. So I'm going to let that sink in. You might want to pause it so you can write stuff down, but let that sink in. Now let's take a look at the same diagram. <clears throat> We're going to look at the same exact diagram and then argue something else. Okay, so here's, here's the same diagram. We're going to argue, can we, can, we can we conclude that A and B are parallel? Can we, can we prove that? Yeah, we can totally do that. Okay, how? Well, let's look at what was given to us. Do you remember what was given to us from the previous example? That D and A are perpendicular, and B and D are perpendicular. That was totally given to us. So that's really, that's really all we need. We can totally establish that A is parallel to B. How? Remember these new things we just learned, dude? Lines perpendicular to the same line are parallel to each other. Right? So it's these new theorems in action. These parallel and perpendicular line theorems are so much fun. Yeah, cats, what's up? All right, so that's those theorems. Now, to, to wrap up this video, I want to go quickly go over um, some of the, the practice problems that are that are there in the uh, in the lesson check. Okay, so we have a we have a thing going on in one town. Avenue A is parallel to Avenue B. How do how do we see that? Right, draw draw a picture. Right, we can totally draw a picture. Avenue A is parallel to Avenue B. We can do this. Okay. Now, Avenue A is also perpendicular to Main Street, okay? So we can make a Main Street going on, right? We can do that. We have every right to do that. That's the picture. How are Avenue B and Main Street related? Here's Avenue B. Here's Main Street. They are perpendicular, okay? They are totally perpendicular. Can we explain that? Yes, because if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it's perpendicular to the other, that last theorem. Okay, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it's perpendicular to the other line. Okay, so we can establish that in, uh, in question one. All right, so question two in the diagram below. Lines A, B, and C are coplanar on the same plane. What conclusion can you make about lines A and B? What can we talk about for lines A and B? Hopefully you see that we can conclude they are parallel. Why? Why can we conclude that they are parallel? Because any two, uh, if lines are perpendicular, to the same line, to, uh, if their lines are perpendicular to the same line, they are parallel to each other. Both A and B are perpendicular to C, therefore they are parallel to each other. So if lines are perpendicular to the same line, they are parallel to each other. Okay, so number three is a neat question we already answered. Uh, explain why the phrase in a plane is, uh, is, not, or is not necessary in 3.7. Uh, in uh, we'll skip that. Some things. Well, I, I want to jump down to five. This is a good one. Let's just jump down to five. Here's a picture going on. Shiro sketched coplanar lines M, N, and R on his homework paper. He claims that it shows M and N are parallel. He's claiming N is parallel to N. Uh, M and N are parallel. Is he right? Well, we don't know. What other information do you need about line R 
to claim Shiro, uh, to have Shiro to be true. We need something else about line R. So right now he's given that N and, and R are perpendicular, and he wants to say that M and N are parallel. Well, we don't know M's angle measure, do we? So if we can establish this, bam, we'd be good to go. So anyway, that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. right? So hopefully we learned a bit more about parallel and perpendicular lines. We're about ready to wrap up this unit. And that's it for now, folks. I'll catch you on the flip side.